Welcome to a moment of meditation. I am Patricia Lee, the assistant chaplain here at the village. We have been meditating on the nine facets of the fruit of the spirit as listed in Galatians chapter five. So far we have covered five of the nine, love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. The one that follow kindness is goodness, but I have decided to switch the order and explore faithfulness first. The reason for the switch will become clear to you next time. First, let us recite this familiar passage written by King David, the psalmist in Psalm 37 together. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. One of the stories of faithfulness is found in the Old Testament book of Ruth. We will read from the beginning. In the days when the judges ruled, there, were, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabat wives. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. They lived there about 10 years, and both Malon and Kilion died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each one of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clung to her, and she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more.
This story had a very stark and bleak beginning. The family from Bethlehem in Judah had to leave their hometown because of famine. They fled to a foreign country called Moab, settled there, and the two sons each took a Moabite wife. Tragedy stuck. The father of the family died, leaving his wife a widow. They lived there 10 years. Then tragedy stuck, struck two more times. Both of the sons died. There was Naomi with her two Moabite daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. All three of them have been widowed. Then Naomi heard that there was food in Judah now that the famine was over, so she decided to return home. But what about her two daughters-in-law? Their families of origin was there. They were still young with opportunity to remarry. Out of consideration for them, Naomi blessed them and sent them home. They had enjoyed a loving, harmonious relationship. They wept when they said goodbye. One of the two, Orpah, left to go back to her parents. But we read in verse 14, Ruth clung to her. When Naomi tried to persuade Ruth to go back to her people, Ruth basically pledged her life to her mother-in-law. She said, I will go where you go. I will stay where you stay. I will take your people as my people. I will worship your God as my God. I will be with you till we die, and I will be buried with you. How did Ruth's declaration express her faithfulness to Naomi? First, she was loyal. Her pledge was to Naomi and not to anyone else. Secondly, she was submissive. She pledged to follow Naomi's leading. Thirdly, she was self-sacrificial, forsaking her familiar environment to go to an unknown. And then number four, she was unwavering and steadfast, promising to stay with Naomi until death. Ruth's pledge to Naomi is such a moving declaration of faithfulness that we often hear it recite in weddings. Faithfulness is essential in a marriage. In fact, faithfulness is, is important in all aspects of relationships, including friendship, work, civic duties, military service, and most of all, our devotion to God. Back to Ruth. Don't you wonder what inspired Ruth's faithfulness or loyalty to Naomi? There may be several factors. First, we can observe that Naomi was a genuinely loving and considerate mother-in-law. They shared a bond of love. Secondly, we can extrapolate that Naomi was a strong and wise woman, able to handle some of the most devastating losses in life. Ruth likely had, de had developed a deep respect for Naomi. Thirdly, we can imagine that Naomi most likely had spoken well of the people she belonged to. Otherwise, it would be difficult for Ruth to say, your people shall be my people. We have also observed that Naomi speak honestly about her bitterness against God. In verse 13, Naomi acknowledged that she felt the hand of the Lord has gone out against her. Yet Ruth still wanted to claim Naomi's God as her God. So there is something Ruth had observed in Naomi that her God was worth her pursuing. So faithfulness does not develop in a vacuum. But being faithful is costly. You put down your self-interest in order to be faithful. So love is an element of faithfulness. Then endurance and steadfastness are involved. So patience is also required. We can see how the various parts of the beautiful fruit of the spirits are all connected. Ultimately, when we are faithful to God, we can be faithful in all other realms of life. Well, how can we be faithful to God? First, when we experience God's faithfulness to us, then we will want to be faithful to Him. Second, because faithfulness is very much a part of God's character, as His children, the Spirit will bring, bring about God's character in our lives, including faithfulness. 
Ruth was faithful to Naomi by trusting her completely. Likewise, we are faithful to the Lord Jesus by trusting him for anything and everything. This hymn, I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus, expresses exactly that commitment. Let's sing as Stan Stokes leads us. From Lamentations chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Thanks be to God.